Hi guys, today we're looking at a Canon A1. This one I got from a dear friend of mine, and it's a kind of a funny story. I was visiting in his house and he offered me this camera, and he also noticed that I had this large can of peanuts from Costco and we traded. So literally, I got this for peanuts. And it came with three lenses. Uh, only the prime lens was a Canon lens, a 50 millimeter f 1.4. When these were new, they cost $625. And, but generally, they sold at a 40% discount from anywhere from $375 to $435. The value on eBay right now for one of these, not counting the lens, would be about $80. This one's in pretty good condition. It was in excellent condition when I got it. It's been setting for a couple of years and the uh, lock switch doesn't work like it should. But that's the only thing stopping it from being a perfect camera. It's the most complex 35 millimeter camera ever made, I swear. And the manual for it is 100 pages long and there's no waste in the manual. It's all facts you really need to know. These were made from 1978 to 1985. It was the first single lens reflex to offer an electronically controlled programmed auto exposure mode. Accessories included a motor drive. This is one on this one. Uh, it's a high, it's the high technical standard bearer landmark from the Canon amateur level A series single lens reflexes. Boy, that's a long sentence. It was sensational when it was, re when it was released in 1978. It's been a runaway bestseller and it's offered new single lens reflex buyers considerable features and value for the price. It has shutter priority, aperture priority, exposure compensation, plus or minus two f-stops, the ISO ranges from 6 to 12,800. It has 16 shutter speeds from a thousandth down to 30th, 30 seconds. The metering works all the way down to EB6, and the equivalent of that is if you shot at f1.4 for 8 seconds with ISO 100 film. And it's capable of multiple exposures, and it has an eyepiece shutter. Let's take a look at this. On the top, we have the rewind knob with a crank, and you have to pull up and then pop it up to release the back like that. Around, around the film rewind knob is the film speed setting dial for setting the ASA or the ISO setting. There's a almost hidden little chrome button on the side you have to push to change the speed. Right now it's at ASA 200. If I push that in, I can turn this dial. I'll turn it up to 1,000. Actually, that's 1,600. On the other side of the dial is the exposure compensation, and that stays locked until you release this button. And if you push the button, you can change the exposure compensation. And instead of indicating plus one and minus one, it indicates plus one, two, plus up to four, but then in the negative direction, it goes in halves and fourths, which sort of makes sense um, photographically speaking. This little button here inside this lever is the battery test button. And if you press it, this light should flash rapidly if your battery is good. This battery is at about 5.6 volts. It should probably be replaced. And in fact, maybe if I did, my lock mechanism would work. I've got some on order, but they're not coming in yet. This little lever here turns the, enables the indicator of the shutter speed and f-stop to appear in the viewfinder. Turn to the left, it wouldn't. Turn to the right, if you look inside, you will see the shutter speed and f-stop. And I'll show you a picture of that. So with the white dot showing, push to the right, 
that's the way you would enable the viewfinder display mode. I took the eye cup off here to show you the viewfinder shutter. The little lever on the back of the camera opens and closes that. So if you were doing selfies and you were in front of the camera, you would want to close that so that it wouldn't, light coming in the eyepiece wouldn't affect the exposure. In shutter priority mode, if the lens is not set in auto mode, then the f-stop shown is a suggested f-stop, not the one you would actually be using. Of course, there's a film plane indicator, which you would use if you actually measured to your subject before you took the picture. And next is the hot shoe. To the right of that, we have the frame counter hidden behind the lever here. That's the shutter speed aperture window. Unlike most cameras, this is the mode switch from TB to AB, which is shutter priority, timing value, and AB, aperture value. So instead of a dial to select the shutter speed or the f-stop, you have one dial and you select either one. So depending on where you set it, in TB mode, it's showing the shutter speed in this window. And if I turn it to aperture value mode, with this little lever, then it shows the aperture values in the window. And again, those aperture values would be the aperture values you set with this ring if the shutter is set to auto mode. If the shutter is not set to auto mode, your aperture would be set manually. And back in shutter priority mode, where you can see the shutter speeds, right now it's at 125th. The, uh, Flash sync speed for this camera is 1 60th of a second, and it shows a little flash indicator by a 60th of a second. If you crank the shutter speed all the way up, it enters P mode, which is the fully programmable mode. And in that case, it does both the shutter speed and the f stop, and again, assuming you have the lens set in auto mode and not manually set for the aperture setting. Shutter speeds slower than one second, like two seconds, four seconds here, are in sort of a yellow goldish color in the shutter speed dial. There's the battery indicator light, which we just shown. And this little lever is the auto position. There's an L for lock, which doesn't work on this camera. And there's a two second delay and a 10 second delay. And then hidden underneath the rewind crank, is a little lever that you can use to make multiple exposures. If you take a, an exposure at a 500th of a second, and then you want to make a double exposure, you push this button in, and it gives a little red warning. Then you advance the, now when you advance the lever, it only cocks the shutter, it doesn't advance the film, and then you can take your second exposure. And you'll notice also that having done that, it moves the lever back again, so the next time will be a disabled for double exposure until you press that button. Again. It's a clever arrangement, it, and it works pretty well. Take a look at the camera front. There's a lot of stuff going on here. There's a guard here for the shutter speed aperture window, so the little lever that we use to dial in the shutter speed can be disabled if you push this guard up. It covers up the knurled knob so that you can't change it, which is what you would use if you wanted to hand this camera to your grandmother to take your picture and you had it all set. That way she couldn't mess up the aperture or shutter speed accidentally. Or if you're in some mode where you have it mounted on a tripod, you got it all set, you don't want it to accidentally get changed even perhaps by your own reflexes. There's a battery compartment cover, um, which is missing on this camera because we have the motor drive on it and the piece that would be there, it just doesn't exist. I've never had it. With the battery grip off, you can see the alignment pin here for the battery grip and the hole where you, there's a cover missing that would be clipped here if you didn't own the battery grip. And to the right is the door for the battery compartment. The battery that's in there now and dying is a EverReady photo battery called an A544. The equivalents on 
Amazon are a 4 LR44 or a PX-28. There's a million substitute batteries. They're all little 6 volt batteries. Of course we have the lens. This is the X-Sync port. Again for 1 60th of a second. There's two little buttons here on the side. The silver one is the exposure preview button and that's just another way of showing in the viewfinder the LED display that shows the shutter speed and f-stop. And then the little black button on the top which actually I think is hard to get at is actually they call that the exposure memory button. It's really exposure lock. So if you wanted to take a picture and you wanted to set the exposure at one point and then refocus and take the picture at a different point, you would point it to where you want the exposure, press that button in, then reframe and move the camera while holding that and take the picture. It's awkward, but it works. It's the equivalent of the modern day's camera of holding the shutter button halfway down to get your exposure set, then rotating and taking your picture where you want. And the most confusing button of all on this camera is right here, and this is the depth of field preview button, which has a couple of purposes. If you just push it in, it will indeed stop down the lens and you'll see the depth of field through the viewfinder get darker, assuming you have it set at f16 or something dark. Of course, if you had it set at 1.4 and pushed it in, nothing would happen. But it also has a little clever little flip-up lever, which doesn't by itself do anything. And if you press it in and release it, it sort of works the same way. But if you press it in, a little chrome button pops up and locks it in. So now your depth of field preview is permanently depressed. So at that point in time, you're in aperture priority regardless of the mode setting. It bypasses the mode. You're basically turned the, the camera into a stop down exposure, auto exposure mode uh, permanently until you release it from this position. And the way you do that is you pivot the, pivot the little lever down and press it and it'll push the little button in and snap it back out. They put a lot of functionality into the buttons on this thing. If we take a look at the lens, the lens release lever is built into the lens and it's right here. So if we just depress that, turn counterclockwise a little ways, the lens easily comes off. It's got two easily aligned red dots, a lot easier than most cameras. Just pop it in, turn clockwise till it snaps, and it's in place. This is the focus ring. It's a beautiful focus ring, quite a long throw, and the view from the viewfinder is unbelievably pretty. Uh, with the split image as well as a Fresnel sort of lens uh, where it, I shouldn't say Fresnel as a well a, a focus screen as well as the split image it just does a beautiful job and of course there's an aperture depth of field scale and you'll notice like a lot of cameras you there's a little red dot for infrared focus if you loaded this with infrared film and let me see which one's feet here Meters are in white, feet are in green, so if you were at exactly three feet, instead of focusing on that bar after you focused, then you would move it until it hits the little red dot, and that'd be accurate infrared focus. And then here's the aperture ring, and right now it's in manual mode, and it goes from f1.4 to f22. And to get to auto mode, you have to depress this little button and turn it until it snaps into the A. Now again, that's not a function of the Canon A1 camera, that's a function of this series of lenses and the way they work. On the left and right side, there's really nothing to see except the two strap lugs. On the camera back, this one came with a rubber eye cup, which is getting old and split. This is the, they call it the memo holder, where you put a piece of your old cardboard from the film package so you can remind yourself which type of film is in this camera. Of course you would have the, hopefully you'd have the ISO speed set correctly, but that could also be it telling you whether it's black and white or color. Now let's take a look at this motor drive. 
there's a red light here. That would only come on if you're at the end of a roll of film. So if you had a 30 expo 36 exposure roll of film and you're taking pictures, when you get to the end, the red light comes on. This little white cap is a cover for a cable release socket. So you could set a cable release into this and have it remotely controlled as opposed to the threaded cable release that would go in here and you'd have to push a button. This one would be an electronic cable release. The uh, rewind button for rewinding the film on the back of the camera is actually all accessible by this lever. So when this thing bolts on, there's an extra pin that goes up that can press into rewind film. So you have to depress this little button to release it and then press the R for rewind up. You can get that lever to go up. And what it is, is just a pin that goes up at the up position and it depresses to where the button is. And I'll show you that in a minute. And the lock lever is how you take the back off and it has a release button, which is hard to see. So you could press this lock for until you're blue in the face button until you press the release button it never happens. That's to remove the power pack from the back. On the bottom, that's the release for the battery compartment. It takes 12 AA batteries. And this switches for off, slow, low and high. So that's, I shouldn't say slow, single, low and high. So single exposures would be over there. The low speed would be here and the high speed is up there. So that's the, the bottom. On the motor drive front, this little white button bypasses the slow, low or high and always forces it into high. So if you were taking pictures of the kids and you were just in single mode, but you wanted to do a burst, you just have to put your little finger on that lever, push it in, and then it would start firing fast. Kind of clever. And finally on the top, there's your normal shutter release on the camera, but there's also a shutter release button on the motor winder. And there's a lock here that works and an auto mode. So if I have it in auto and I take it and here, it's turned off. Let me put it in single mode. Now the motor drive is working in single mode. Also, if you flip it up for vertical shots, there's another lock and unlock button here. And this is a vertical release shutter release. So there's really three shutter releases on this camera. This one, this one and this one, and they'll all work. When the motor drive is active, um, all three can be active at the same time. And if I turn this to lock and this one to lock, which is red, then this one won't work. This one won't work, but this one will still work and still use the motor drive. And if I turn it to, instead of single to low speed, It does that. I, I forget how many frames per second that is, but in high speed, I believe it's five frames per second. And again, it's probably, if you're used to this camera, I like the shutter button up here all the time. It's better anyhow. I would put that one in auto and you'd be taking it five frames per second. A really good way to waste all your film. Oh, and um, let me go back to single mode just for fun. So now we're in single mode, takes one picture. But again, if I use my little finger to push that white button in, the white button has a lock also. There's a, a ring around it. You have to pivot it like that. Now the white button will be depressed. So if I hit that white button with my little finger, you can do rapid, even though it's in single mode normally. Clever arrangement. I'll put this back in lock. So now let's take a look at this motor drive since we're lucky enough to have one on this camera. Removing it is actually pretty easy. Again, there's a lever on the back with a special release. So if we push this, 
and push it to the right, it literally, come on, it literally falls right off. Not quite so easy, but there it is. So here's what the bottom of the battery pack looks like. Here's the bottom of the camera with the battery pack off. Now that's the coupling to advance the film. That's the electrical contacts. And this is the way you remove this piece from the camera. A little pop-up lever. And it's off. Now you notice here's your normal button for rewinding the film. You'd have to press that and crank the crank to rewind the film. But if you use the bottom of the motor drive unit, this is what the R button does. It pushes this pin up and down, which just depresses this button for you. Clever arrangement. And unlike some of my cameras, this one actually mounts way easier than most. Got the flip up knob, which never seems to really ever come loose. There's my battery pack. There's alignment pins. So you can't go wrong. It sits down on it and then you just push, and it's hard to see from the left I tip it up, you just push the lock to the side, actually just release the button, it pops in and it's locked and we're back to having a battery pack. I'm still in slow mode. Let's go to high speed mode. Now again the lock function on mine doesn't work. You notice I can put it in lock here, I can put it in lock here, it's in lock there, and I can still take pictures. This should be a two second delay to take the photograph, and it doesn't work. I'll have to, well I'm probably never going to fix it because this is just going to go on the wall, but it probably wouldn't be hard to fix. I think it's a mechanical linkage problem underneath this or perhaps just dirt on some contacts. Might even be the low battery. Who knows? It is what it is. It's a beautiful little camera and it would still take wonderful pictures I'm sure. The lens is pretty good. I've mounted this lens on my Fuji X-H2 and it doesn't have as good a resolution as the existing 18 to 135 zoom that I bought with my Fuji so it it was a great lens in its day, but it's not as sharp as you'd like it to be. Well, that's it. Thanks a lot for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video.